Okay, now we're going to talk about histoplasma capsulatum. Here it is. I don't know if you have these cards, but these are really good. Um, I like to look at these in addition to uh, Picmonic. I'm looking at Picmonic tonight. Uh, so, uh, often they show the entrance to a cave, and we're talking about um, Ohio, um, Mississippi, and Ohio River Valley. And they will talk about bats, bat droppings, bird droppings um, within the, not bird droppings, bat droppings within caves. And um, so let's talk about the main points. So um, it's fungi, it's systemic. Um, 25 degrees is the uh, branched hyphae, and then in the body, 37 degrees, they become yeast. Uh, unicellular le uh, yeasts, and that these yeasts uh, can be found within macrophages in tissue samples, which is very interesting and a good way to remember it. So let's talk about the clinical case. An elderly uh, cave explorer in Ohio, that's the buzzword, complained to his physician of weakness in the last few months. The physician exam reveals sores in his mouth, and an x-ray shows small calcifications throughout the body. A lung biopsy reveals his, uh, small budding cells within macrophages. Based on his age, location, and biopsy results, the physician begins the patient on oral amphotericin B. So, uh, we know it's caves, and we know that uh, it can be caused by these bat droppings, and so you might think uh, about nitrogen in the soil, and so as far as the clinical presentation is concerned, it says that for immunocompetent, immunocompetent people, they are asymptomatic, but for immunocompromised, there is a systemic infection from histoplasmosis. So for the pathobiology, uh, the spores from the bird droppings are inhaled and the macrophages phagocytose them, and they are carried systemically and inside the macrophages these spores form budding yeasts and the yeast um, are what cause the local infections throughout the body and the um, infection is contained within epithelioid granulomas and the granulomas appear as small calcium deposits on x-ray in immunocompromised uh, sorry in the immunocompromised, the local infections are poorly contained and severe granulotomous disease uh, occurs throughout the body, especially the adrenal glands, the liver, and the spleen. So the point here is that in, in the immunocompromised, they, uh, the infections are poorly contained. So for diagnosis, they are uh, cultured at different temperatures. Branched high fit. 25 degrees and single cells at 37 degrees and for tissue biopsy yeast cells within macrophages is what you're looking for and for the serology to detect uh, previous exposure uh, intradermal injection of histoplasmin antigen causes DTH response so now for some quick facts this fungus gets its name because it is found in histiocytes, which are macrophages. However, despite its name, it is not encapsulated. <clears throat> Easy to forget. And normal individuals can develop mild pneumonia after prolonged exposure to bird droppings, e.g. chicken farmers. And for disseminated histoplasmosis, it is often a sign of AIDS and HIV positive people. It is clinically similar to military tuberculosis. So remember that uh, buzzwords here, Mississippi and Ohio River Valley, pneumonia, uh, caseating granulomas, uh, arrhythma nodosum. Let's talk about that. Let's look at Picmonic here. So arrhythma nodosum is inflammation of the fat cells beneath the skin. It is characterized by red tendon nodules or bumps on the anterior surface of the uh, shins. And histoplasma can be associated with arrhythma nodosum. 
So let's try to remember that. Mr. Plasma Capsulatum. <laughs>